talking of Mozart. There's a new book out called Faithfully Mozart. It's an absolutely sumptuous illustrated selection of his letters. Child prodigy, genius freak, a man who lived frivolously and died a pauper, the myths surrounding Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart, composer of some of the world's most sublime music, have long ago overtaken the known facts of his life. It seems that Mozart the man has been forgotten, leaving only the legends and his astonishing musical legacy. Now, in this charming and very personal tribute, artist Donovan Bixley offers a portrait of Mozart that will change forever the way he is viewed. Share in his triumphs and his despair, his laughter and his tears, as Mozart and his world brought to vivid life nearly 100 original drawings and paintings, over 50 of them in full colour. The text of the book is Mozart's letters, or based on a selection of his letters anyway, engagingly translated, with accompanying notes when you need them and accompanying CD as well. All in all, I have to say, an absolutely glorious production. Well, the author is Donovan Bixley, and he joins me shortly. And in the meantime, let's have a track from that very disc which comes with the book. When you talk about cultural icons in world history, you've got Leonardo da Vinci, you've got William Shakespeare and Mozart. And these guys are so huge, they're like brand names, and yet not many people know anything about the, the men behind the name. And so that was really sort of the idea behind sort of bringing Mozart to the general public, because, you know, poor old Mozart, he's, he's sort of been put away into the academic tomes and been removed from the well, general public. Well, reintroduce him to us then, Donovan. What was the sense you got of the man Mozart was? Well, I first discovered Mozart through his letters which was a lovely way to discover him because I hadn't read any books, I hadn't even seen the movie Armadeo. So you'd never heard his voice, as it were? No, I'd known his music, and I was just absolutely blown away by this guy when I read Mozart's letters. You know, here's a guy who's 13-year-old Mozart who's uh, he's going to the ballet and he writes how one of the ballet dancers let off a fart every time he jumped, or he gives this absolutely hilarious description of one of his piano pupils who fell in love with him, and he describes her as being absolutely huge and she wore these skimpy clothes and tried to come on to him and, and squeeze next to him on the piano stool and yet he says, oh, but she had a face that, that a painter would use to portray hell and uh, she sweated <laughs> profusely and she told everyone in town that they were getting married and going on honeymoon in Italy and really Mozart couldn't stand her. So, And I just thought, wow, this is so unlike what I thought a classical composer would be like. And I, I obviously had these uh, very vivid images in my head of these things that he was talking about and I thought this would make a really great book. Why were so many letters preserved? Well Mozart being a, a young guy who was famous from the age of five as dad, being a typical guy from the 18th century, wanted to make a quick buck out of him so he... Well he got... sounds like a typical guy from the 20th century actually. Yeah. So he sounds like your classic pushy father like you see with the tennis fathers here. Yeah, pushing their... yeah it was very similar you know he took, uh, Mozart also had an older sister who was a very gifted pianist too and he took both the children you know, from the age when Mozart was six, took them on tour throughout the whole of Europe and even off to England and because Mozart was so famous from such a young age there's this absolutely huge amount of information out there about him and and his father wanted to one day write the great biography of his brilliant son so he saved everything letters and uh, newspaper clippings and anything that he could find so you have this absolutely huge amount of information about Mozart and in some ways he must be one of the most highly documented historical figures and yet at the same time there's all this mythology that surrounds him the myths around being buried in a pauper's grave and and all these kind of things which are really um, not true. <laughs> but no, well, had people looked at his correspondence before? I mean, they must have. Yeah, well, I mean, it, it hasn't, it's, it's not a secretive thing. I suppose it's just a, a massive, big thousand-page tome that not many people really uh, get to look at. And it's, it's absolutely fascinating correspondence because you get to see a real insight into what this man was like. He wasn't a, he wasn't a god. He wasn't a one-dimensional movie character. He was a real man. And, you know, he wasn't, you know, sure, sometimes he was silly and sometimes he told rude jokes at parties and sometimes he, he wrote intimate, naughty letters to his wife and sometimes he, he was very astute and sometimes he was incredibly naive. And, I mean, in short, he was, when you read his entire correspondence, you get the sense that at the end of the day he was, he was a real man who just happened to have this incredible gift for music. So I was still using 
Mozart's actual words and his phrases and his way of writing because he has this really unique, interesting way of writing, which is uh, very funny because he fills his letters with all these puns and rhymes and he could speak five languages, so he's constantly changing between languages and using like big lines of alliteration and, and similes. And do you mind if I, I read a little bit of one of his letters? Please, go ahead. Here's a letter from when he's about 14, and I'll just read you a little bit of it. He's writing from Italy back home to Salzburg to his mother and his sister. He says, I hope that by Easter we shall finally be back home. I'm very much looking forward to being backwards, for back in Salzburg, we may send more letters back and forth, and I will no longer have to go backwards and forwards between Italy and Salzburg. And I can look forward to a night's rest back in my own bed and being back with my dear mama and sister again and remaining the fourth of my backwards family. And then he signs it off, <laughs> Oida Naflo Trazom, which is backwards <laughs> for um, Adio Wolfgang Mozart. <laughs> so he's, he's, lit he's literarily playful as well as musically playful. Yeah. What were the real identifying marks of the culture he existed in in the latter half of the 1700s? I mean, apart from the obvious things like the, the powdered wigs and the, and the jackets, one of the things I noticed was you have a lot of people gossiping at the back of rooms, lots of gossip sort of off, off centre, if you like, in the background. And that was something that you can see from his letters really annoyed him. Yeah, I guess that was more of a factor of Mozart's life. He was a very famous guy around town and because he was a working musician he was the first composer to go out there and become a freelance musician he broke away from the master servant relationship that had existed before his time it was an incredibly brave move for him to go out there and because of that he didn't sit away in an ivory tower writing classical music all day he had to work and earn money almost like a commercial composer and you'd see him around town and you'd bump into him and, you know, people were constantly gossiping about what he was up to and who he was going out with and whether he was marrying this person or that person and whether he was leaving town or staying here. Yeah, all, all the usual gossip. Yes. Donovan Bixley and your flesh and blood Mozart. That's been fascinating.